Inspiration Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast, as always, with both Joe Neuer and Ryan Boniface. How are we doing this week, guys? Yeah, good, thank you, Lee. And yourself, Ow. Joseph, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, I'm just, I just had a bit of a bit of a problem. Sorry, guys. Just can Technical you... issues, technical issues. Shall we <laughs> fill in for you? I just realised um, that Instagram might hear me unless they can hear you. Okay. We are, as you can tell there, we are not only recording the podcast now, but we are live on Instagram. We'll be doing this for a little while. So round about, what are we, nine o'clock on a Tuesday, check out Instagram. We'll probably be again on the week this comes out. Um, Give us a listen there, as well as live. Joe giving a good way to the camera. And Ryan, I'm sorry, I cut you off as you're going to ask how I was doing as well. That was very rude of me. I don't know if that was what I was going to ask, but oh, you wanna, if you want to assume it, then you go, mate. You go. I will presume that, and I'll say I'm doing very well, and <laughs> thank you very much for asking. Um, thank everyone, as always, for listening, watching um, across all podcast pl- 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 platforms. That's got as easy a sentence as you'd think. And YouTube as well. Um, social media, hit us up. We are at listen to I N, listen T O I N. Joe is at just stick in Joe Neuer, Inspiration Nation into the search engine. And his many, many different handles will come up depending which platform you're on because he's on them all. So, Joe, what is the topic of conversation for this week? Right. I just want to just give a shout out to, uh, to Cindy Perry Dodgers. I want to give out a shout out to, to Angela as well. Uh, live Angela, I do love with Angela because they're on Instagram. They're excellent. They're always supporting. So I just want to give a shout out. So we are. Oh, and also Emma, welcome. We're getting people joining. So it's going to be a little bit of this as we go through. Um, so I'm going to talk about something called the Goldilocks zone today. And this is my thing on this because I I was like writing, um, doing a little bit of a blog on this, and uh, I, I I thought about. Why do stories like Goldlocks and the Three Bears talk about talk about comfort? And then we've got this thing about, you know, the Goldilocks zone in space, right? It's the perfect place where we can habitat. So it's a safe place. So I'm just wondering, once about this discussion, whether these stories sort of talk about, like Goldilocks talks about, you know, the right chair, you know, too big, too small and just right. And then we've got the bear too hard, too soft and just right. Whether there's any cultural thing in safety, like... Are we being, I suppose, programmed to seek comfort and seek like the easiest way to live, I suppose. And so we minimise the challenges because life is hard. Don't get me wrong. But are we are, are we striving as a species to sort of seek a bit of comfort with these type of stories we tell ourselves, like calling things like the Goldilocks zone and, you know, people trying to avoid you know, pain, trying to go towards pleasure, maybe short-term pleasures and stuff like that. And is there anything in that? I want to talk about it, really. Um, and that, that's when I sort of took the, the Goldlock story and said, well, okay, if, if Goldlock's going through trying all these porridges and things like that, and what's the just right thing? You know, what's going on there? You know, what, what is it? Are we, are we training our children to sort of just seek comfort and that everything's going to be, you know, everything's going to be easy, it's going to be tranquil, and we're just seeking that comfort all the time rather than actually are we looking for adversity in terms of we're going to make it scar, it's going to be hard and it's not always going to work out. Um, you're not always going to find the perfect bed. You're not always going to find the, the perfect porridge, you know? Um, and, and, and of course we're looking space. You're never always going to find a perfect plant, right? And I was wondering why they called it the Goldilocks zone. I know why, because perfect living, living conditions. Um, so I just wonder whether there's anything, you guys, what you think about things like that, um, whether you've got any thoughts around that. Start off, start for six. My first question back to you, Joe, was going to be whether you were your instinct, perception, whatever the best word is, is whether Goldilocks zone is a good thing or a bad thing. And I think your lean in there that you went to once I thought of that question was it's probably more of a negative and a positive in that it possibly stops you pushing yourself, going outside your comfort zone, growing that sort of thing. Would I be right in your your viewpoint there? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. You know, what, why call it the Goldilocks zone? Why not call it, I don't know, something different? But because Goldlocks is quite cultural, isn't it? It's quite a yeah, cultural yeah, yeah. story. It's obviously, that it's just right. Everything's just right. But nothing is ever just right. You know, if we get to just right, then we're never looking to improve. And I think you can just enjoy the moment. Um, but then there's a lot of things around, okay, so if you stay in there too long, it's like the frog boiling frog we'd mentioned before, that the temperature gets brought up and then, you know, you just essentially just 
don't improve. And like in the boiling frog thing, you, the temperature gets turned up and no one notices and the, the frog dies. Um, and I've just thought, I don't know whether this is something, you know, we're talking about our own planet, you know, climate change, you know, you know, things are changing, it's warming up, you know, and, and we, we, we're, we're picking up on it. But life was really good, um, you know, for us as, as a human species. But now we're recognising, hang on a minute, you know, things are getting a bit out of, out of balance. So is there, is there a lot that are we, are we ignoring stuff as a culture, do you think? Or do you think there's a bit more awareness around now about actually, you know, maybe, you know, we are sort of starting to wake up to think actually, you know, we do need to start doing things and start leaning to those uncomfortable And I think the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial space speaks to this quite a lot. So I think entrepreneurs do look for that difficult things like looking at Elon Musk and going to, to Mars, look at all these innovators. And they're the ones that sort of seem to lean to these hard things. But I don't know whether it's me just because I've now got into this world where I'm seeing it more or whether it is cultural and whether now I've linked that story to something that, you know, is that because we've grown up as that sort of Goldlock story and you know, everything's just right. You know, I've been these fairy tales that have been maybe um, told in a way that actually it's all going to be all right and everything's going to be good, but it's not always going to be good. But I do know, and I don't know whether you know guys know, but there's the, um, I think, Grimm stories or something. I've not really read them, but people say that they're actually quite dark stories and that they've taken those stories and then, you know, make them a little bit more easier on the ear for, for, for younger children. So I just wanted to talk about that a bit and whether you think about that and what were your, I suppose, childhoods like? Did you always think that, because when I was a child, I always thought, oh, everything's going to turn out right in the end. And, and, it, and it does, you still progress, but there are difficult things. And, and again, do we, do we have that grit? Do we have that, that, that thirst for adversity? And, and, and I definitely as I've got older, I don't know whether I've done it the right way around, to be fair, because I think I would have had it more when I was younger, but now I feel like I'm having it more when I'm older. So but a bit of a personal experience. Um, I'm in the same space as you a bit with that. Just on the fairy tales bit, by the way, Joe. Yeah, the original stories were quite gruesome, and then they've been uh, watered down over time is, is yeah. very, very true. Because actually, when you analyse it, you know, Hans and Gretel stuffing a witch in the oven and cooking her isn't the uh, the nicest thing, is it? But they tell it in the, the kid-friendly yeah. way. But apparently the original ones, and I'm not sure if I have ever read any or not, I can't remember, but are, are quite gruesome. But more back on track, um, I think you're right about the programmed bit. I think, obviously, instinctively, there's part of us that will search for safety, I suppose, more than anything else. Um, and it's like... So I'm a, for, for pets, I'm a cat person. And anyone who's got one or know cats, know that cats love a box. If you put an empty box on the floor, two seconds later, that cat will be in that box. And the reason they like it is they're, they're surrounded. So they know nothing can attack them because they're protected on those sides and it's, it's safe for them and it's a comfortable space. And they always look for those sort of things where they're safe. And I've got to believe we must have that same sort of instinct built into us somewhere. So I think you're right. And I do think there's that, com you know, Goldilocks is like, it's another kind of comfort zone thing, isn't it? You get to that comfortable place and everything's easy or perceived to be easy and going well when you don't really have to try. And then if you don't have to try, you don't try. And then, you know, you stagnate or worse, you don't maintain what is that comfort level and you start spiraling backwards. So I do think there's a, there's a big risk in that. And actually you're right, Joe, there's probably things that probably, subconsciously incentivize you to seek out that that comfort zone when actually that's probably not a good thing personally or you know owing to the global warming stuff for us as a as a species if you like overall but i see it i was looking like with my kids and i and i was looking at them and i was thinking when i used to be like that when they're da the most important thing in their day is how they get the washing up done and how they do their homework so they can have their time playing their games and that's it that's the goal is to have that time doing nothing, so to speak. And I very much remember having that. And then over time, and I'd probably say I, I had that, even though things come along like, you know, having your job, having kids, et cetera, et cetera. I'd still, I mean, I remember when my kids were very young, sitting with the baby monitor next to me, playing football manager on my computer. That was still a, you know, that was the goal, was to get everything else done to have time doing that. Whereas as I've now gone through my 30s, it's more putting my you know there's still downtime i've done it just before this um i watched now the walking dead with, but that was it i stopped i kind of did work did some extra stuff i'm doing outside work stopped at seven had an hour now doing this but built in that downtime but really my energy was into all those other things so it has flipped but 
it did take me a while to get here and I think it's accelerated the last couple of years as we do this and like you said being in the world so you see a lot of this on Instagram and in that sort of space but similar to you it's a bit of a, a newer thing to me to really be consciously pushing myself outside of that comfortable space yeah and and, and it's really interesting because I've just got a couple of people it's like um, Angela on the Instagram said that is deep actually we are so comfortable we've forgotten that uh, those that are next to us so there's sort of thoughts around that coming out on the uh you know on the on the actual instagram so again again we get comfort as opposed to that thing of oh we're all comfortable we don't sort of reach out a little bit maybe we just yeah, sort of yeah. stay in the bubble which i think is a really good point um, and quite timely at the moment with everything as well and the whole reaching out message so yeah and i, and I don't know what ryan thinks and i'm just going to come over to you ryan but you know i know when i was a child i was just aiming to sort of maybe get on my my, my computer you know get work out of the way and then I can just go and play and I'll, and I'll maybe sit all weekend and just play computer games. Nothing wrong with computer games. I love them. And I still love them now. But I'm just thinking back then there was no like, you couldn't, you couldn't like earn a living like you can now, right? Um, and now you can earn a living, which is great. And I think if I had my time again, I'd probably be doing like that now. <laughs> I think I would. But back then, like I would just spend hours like doing that and, and just seeking maybe to sit down in front of the TV um, and now I've realised, now I'm starting to be much more observed. I'm thinking, is this really good me sitting here, you know, just watching TV? But I think there's got to be a, I think there's got to be a balance. I think there's got to be that work ethic and then you can have that reward, I think, after you've done it. But I think, yeah. but before I think what I was doing, I think I was just like, just seeking that comfort, not doing as much as I could have done. I don't think living that potential. And I think that's probably when I became a bit stagnant um, and expected things to take off when they nearly, nearly didn't take off. Um, and it takes persistence. Um, so again, you know, I was trying to get that that blend of it really, because you know that's where I think it sits. And, and I don't know whether I've been programmed that way. Now, am I, am I coming out of that programming? Is this is this what I'm now viewing right? Is it is it? Um, oh, I see. Listening to IM podcasters join the Instagram. <laughs> I thought I could see the comments as well if I join in. Oh, look at that! Yeah, that's a good idea. What a good idea, Ryan. What's your thoughts on all this? Because I know I mentioned computer games and stuff like that, and you're an avid gamer, and now we can sort of live off the back of that because it's still difficult, isn't it, to do like you've just started? Oh, I'll let you tell the people because this is your thing now, Ryan. Off you go. Um, I think I think everyone really li lives the most comfortable life they can to a certain degree in most aspects people will just do what they have to to get by um i don't know some people will will leave the washing up one night because it's they'll just do it in the morning after they've had breakfast rather than doing it the night before and in the morning or whatever just because they can get away with not having to do it i, I think there are a lot of there are a lot of people will do will I think it's just basic human nature to achieve the same outcome at the easiest way possible. So if you're faced with driving to the shop, which is a mile away or walking to the shop a mile away, you're nine times out of 10, you're going to drive it because that's the easiest way to, to, to do it. You know, unless you have a different reason for walking. Um, for me, it always was when I was a kid, get your homework done, get any chores you got done. And then the rest of the evening is yours. So when you say that, it's kind of ingrained in people that they need to get everything out of the way as kids, as Lee suggested, and they can go and play their games. That was used as, as an incentive to me when I was a kid. So maybe that's where that thought process or, or that, that belief comes from is from my parents and their parents before them and, and things like that. So yeah, it's, and that's the same with work now. It's, it's not a case, but I don't think it's able to be a case pre pre COVID times when we were all going out to work, you couldn't just say to your boss, um, sorry. sorry. Um, you couldn't just say, you couldn't just go, I couldn't love just, that real life interruption on the podcast. I know. <laughs> you couldn't just go to your, your boss and say, um, I'm going home for the afternoon. I'll, I'll, I want to go play games and I'll come back tonight and finish work. It didn't work that way, you know, and it doesn't, and to a, lot, a lesser extent, it doesn't work that way now, albeit employers are a lot more flexible now than what they were, you know, 11, 10, 11 months ago. Um, so I think, I think it's always a case of you get all the important stuff you have to get done out of the way first, and then you can relax later in the, later in your day or later in your week, if it's a home life thing or your weekend or whatever. So, yeah. 
from you, there was something really interesting you said in there. Sorry, cut you off there. Finish before. No, I no, 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 you, you, you know, no, 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 that's you're all good. Because I think there's definitely, as you know from work, me doing things the most efficient way, doing them the to use a management word, the lean way is definitely a key thing. But at the same point, there's the outcomes that you talked about, Ryan. So you can still be pushing yourself to achieve a lot of things, you know, other than literally do the bare minimum work I need to do and then I can sit in front of the TV all night. Mm -hmm. But then once you're trying to achieve those things, you try and do them in the quickest or the best way or the smartest way possible. But I still, I, I think actually that's a smart thing and can still link itself to pushing yourself. I mean, you yourself on that, you're, well, you did this afternoon. You were, you've put yourself back in the, uh, the Twitch environment again. Yeah. And you're pushing yourself to do that because that's something you enjoy doing. You do this with us. See, you know, I know you have been work and you took on you take on a lot of extra things outside of that as well. So you but that doesn't mean you're not going to try and do them in the smartest and the most effective and the, the, the most sensible way for you. And I'll say the same is generally nine out of ten times to use a washing analogy, I will do my washing up as I'm cooking because I like doing that and it gets it all done. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I might decide. Now I'm going to leave that in the morning, but that will be one easy thing to leave against maybe nine other difficult things that have been done. So it's, it's about getting a balance in there. Cause I think what you don't want to do is this level of perfection where you're a hundred percent all the time. And Joe, you always talk about it, it's only important to downtime and it's just balancing it out, but making sure you don't go to the other end of the scale. And I've, you know, I know, and I've seen people who are like this where literally everything is left till the last minute where you're what I like to say is constantly living in your overdraft because that can be a really destructive pattern where you need leave yourself no slack. Whereas if you're working ahead a bit, but you can afford to eat into that slack sometimes, I think is a, a healthier way to do it, which I think is what I do, but I've not really thought of it like that in my head until we talked about this now. I'd like, I'd like to think that um, it's human nature to, to procrastinate about everything. Um, but it's, but it's individual nature to beat themselves out of it or to learn their way out of it. Um, people like, I don't know, Bear Grylls, for example, he doesn't have to go to some Asian um, mountain and climb it for four weeks or whatever, but he does because... That's a brilliant well, description of Bear Grylls there. I love it's, that. It's for TV, I guess, isn't it? But, you know, <laughs> he still chooses to do it. He, he's, done, he's done his time. He doesn't have to go and do that but he, he goes and puts himself out there and I could go and do the same thing, but I don't want to because, well, generally because I don't feel there's a need to bet that it benefits my life from that. But if I did go and do it, you're damn right. I think of the easiest way to go about doing it. Cause I think that's the way everyone would thinks about it. Unless, unless you're set the par of a different course. So if the task was, I don't know, it's just the same, same analogy, but if the task was go and live on a, go and live at the base of a, of a mountain in Asia for four weeks, you know, and that was it, I'd take a luxury four by four camping van. But if you said, no, 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 you've got to live out in the sticks for four weeks, then it's completely different, isn't it? But it's all dependent on the task at hand as to how, how much you need to procrastinate it or how much you can cheese it, if you like, to get, to get away with it. You that's your Jesus. if i was going to yeah, sum you know. up in one word ryan it would be the word procrastinate you love it you drop it in every week <laughs> do i yeah uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible <laughs> it's a terrible um it's a terrible feature of mine i guess the word it's not at but all I, it's not at all because you get loads done what i would say is the word is necessity and i've used this sort of gone through the podcast mm. is we only do what is necessary but you can set your bar as to where that necessary is. So Bear Grylls, for example, it's not necessary for you to climb a mountain. I certainly won't be meeting you by one next week to do it. That's for sure. Cause it's not necessary for me either. Yeah. But for Bear Grylls, it is necessary because he's got a TV contract and he's got to do it for the TV show. The same with you and doing your, your Twitch streaming, it becomes necessary to do that in the way you do it because you've set yourself a goal to do it. Sure. And I think it's where you set that bar is is what makes it. It's necessity is always what makes it happen. I've said loads on the podcast. It's why in times of crisis and times of war, a lot more happens because it becomes necessary for our survival. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. all that. And uh, yeah, necessary. I think it's the why. Why are you doing it? It's yeah. The why. You know, if you if, you know if, if you've got a reason why you're going to climb that mountain, you're going to climb that mountain, right? It depends on the why, right? It depends on. 
you know, because Joe, right, Joe don't don't ask us to climb a mountain, please. I'm not going to ask you to climb a mountain. <laughs> but I think the guys on here might want to say, "I've got um, I've got Cindy from Prairie Dodgers to say delay gratification." I've got a little bit of view on that. We've got um, both of those things that you sound like fun on there as well. Uh, Nina, hi, Nate, Nina. And Nina says here that uh -huh. it's very motivating to see people work hard. Um, and Nina's also said no bills on him. Not quite sure about no bills. I mean, I suppose not having any bills to pay, I suspect that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Um, but I like a lot of that. And I think there's a there's a delayed gratification thing that's meant to be a good thing for you to train your brain not to sort of get that instant gratification. And I think there's probably a lot about that, you know, on social media, all that sort of things. There's experiment. I don't know, did you talk about experiment before where there's, because um, I, I, I just watched some content. I think it's Marissa Peer, actually. And... Um, she was saying that there was a marshmallow in a room and that like these three-year-olds be in the room or three or four-year-olds be in the room and said, don't, don't eat the, if you, if you don't eat the marshmallow, then you'll get two marshmallows. Right. So, so there was like one group that said, the one group that would just eat the marshmallow, they couldn't wait. There, were, there was group two who would, would delay the gratification and there's group three who would actually fight against themselves to delay the gratification because they wanted two instead of the one. So, you know, I think that's a really good thing. Like if you can hold out, if you can, you know, like it's do like do an exercise or anything that's doing, you know, things that are hard, if you can delay, you know, maybe like people saving money, right? It's better to save money rather than going and get that credit card or things like that. It's delayed gratification. I think because everything's done on that, you know, try and get it right now. I think, I don't know what you guys think, but this sort of goes back to this sort of going towards pleasure, and, and moving away from pain right or you know that's we, we, we're designed to do that and again what ryan said about would i rather walk up the town or get the car i'd try and make a conscious effort to actually walk up the town rather than get the car because i want to just get some exercise in or something like that um that's because you have a separate reason though i think if you were just faced with the with the nothing else in your mind do i drive to the shop or do i walk to the shop the majority of people i'm saying would probably go or i'll, I'll drive it and this is where I want to sort of dig into that because is is that is that where you where we think culturally where we need to look at that a bit differently? There was something else you said there, and I can't remember. I lost it in the other thing that I said. What was it? Oh, was it what what did you say? Thing? Yes. So I think in a world where um, you can buy things and you get it instantly with amazon some sometimes it's same day sometimes it's next day if you have prime amazon prime or whatever yeah. um where you can get it instantly and it's not a case of all well, i have to pull out my argos catalog and we have to then drive to argos and put the dodgy seven digit number in and go and pay for it it's 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 different in the sense that i think that the patience of, of human nature or human beings now has come down because yeah you're not having to wait for things generally so when you are told something will take so when you order a parcel and it's one of those that comes from i don't know china or somewhere and it's like oh it will take three working weeks you're like oh that's ages but realistically it's it's not is it it's um it's because we're so we're so we're so taught and um procedured i guess uh, uh, uh to getting something more or more instantly than that Oh, this conditioning. I think I don't. I don't. I don't. And now. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. A condition. Yeah. yeah. I don't really like it because back in the day, back in the day, right? When I used to like want to collect these like free things, you have to collect so many tokens, send them off. You have to wait for twenty-eight days to get your free toy or whatever. Um, I used to think that was ages as a kid. Ages. It was absolutely ages. Um, absolutely ages. Hi, Will and Riley. How you doing? I'm uh, just saying hi to some of you. Um, you think it was ages, right? Um. And now, like you say, Ryan, you know, we can get instant gratification. So, you know, we we can go and get like Amazon next day, right? Go to you know, go to shops and get it. And, and I think because obviously people and I'm going back to Lee's point, you know, people have made things so efficient, like like Amazon um, and things like that, that you know, we we are being conditioned to to want things straight away. And again, this whole culture about I want it now, um, you know. And I think for me, I fall into that trap. I want it now. I go I go and put it on interest free or something like that. And, and I'm looking at this and thinking, do you know what? I need to maybe delay that a little bit and go, do you know what? It's better to be patient um, and not get, not get the quick way and sort of really, you know, work at something to get it good. And, and I think maybe when we try and do things like we, maybe what we're doing this podcast, right? We want some great results and, you know, that whole thing about, where well, it's not going to come straight away, having the patience to keep working and keep just going steadily, keep, 
moving forward um, and without even getting results sometimes, not, not at all. And then over time that compounds. And I think, do you think this had an effect on why people maybe drop off early because of maybe they've got instant gratification and we talk about the culture, about the stories, we talk about gold, a lot of the zone and all the gold that we talked about before. Do you think we're, we're feeding that? Well, as in society's feeding it. Yeah. Or... Yeah, yeah, I think in everything, all those examples you gave there. TV, from Netflix to Amazon, you know, you used to have to go to a shop, rent the film. Um, you used to have to get the other thing was the, uh, I think it was Love Film, wasn't it? I think you could just pay a subscription. You have to wait for your CD to come. Now it's like instant, everybody instant. And that's like magic, isn't it? But it's the same with, with food as well. You've got yeah. microwavable rice now that you wouldn't have had like 20, 30 years ago. Noodles, you can get pizzas that you stick in the microwave, sausages, burgers, and things like that. That was just wasn't a thing back then. Or I say back then as if it was ages ago, but you know what I mean? Like 25, 30 years ago, that, that probably wasn't as much of a thing if it, if it was a thing at all back then. So I think, I think it's... A, I think in since the technological age has come along in the last 50 years, exponentially everything else has just sped up. Like people's expectations have just got quicker. The, the way you can get things are quicker and the way humans have found a way to make their, make it a quicker process from of getting from A to B with whatever the situation at hand is, has gone so much quicker. I don't think there's anything in that time that's slowed down. Think of food. You know, like the thing about food as well, and I just want to short out, give some shout outs. I mean, Will and Dry, hi. Nina said, back in the day, have to wait two weeks for photos to develop. Remember that? Yeah, photos. Also, uh, also I think I think Nina and, and, and Cindy, uh, I think Nina and actually Angela are actually going on a sugar free, sugar free 90 day challenge. They're doing that. I think that's what they're doing. So, again, it's with marshmallow. So, again, that that's whole... a good level of necessity they're setting themselves there. I'd struggle with that one. So you heard it from Lee, guys. He's been struggling with the 90-day challenge for no sugar. I think I'd struggle with that. I think naturally in sugar, I've got like a bit of honey in my, in my coffee. So, um, But I'm, I don't drink too much sugar. But again, that thing, Ryan, you said about like micro sausages and all that sort of stuff. Has that taken away people actually, why, what's the reason we should be cooking food that's actually, you know, good for us rather than having this processed stuff that's quick? To eat and I, and I love it to be honest I, I, I love junk food but I really am trying to like not eat so many crisps <laughs> still struck but I mean there's that whole thing isn't it I mean is it stopping people cooking food the way it should be cooked so it's stopping us becoming you know we could be healthier I suppose I you know rather than sticking like a rustler in a or another uh, you know yes. rustler in the microwave right yeah I think I think that's I think that's proven in the sense that um back in back in the old old days um it was only wealthy men and families that were um for want of a better word fat and to be fat you were seen to be wealthy right back back i'm thinking henry the eighth time so back then you were if if you were if you were overweight you were seen to be wealthy you were seen to be cool he's well off he's he's a big lad whereas now it's more and more people but because these things, these things that are really easy to consume and produce, like as as you mentioned, are also the cheaper alternatives, which then leads it to meaning that the people on lower incomes and of a lower economic standpoint than other people are those that are, are more overweight than than others. The society's gone from being going out and getting, uh, I don't know. Uh, a nice burger for example was more expensive than buying some salad whereas now that table's turned right uh, getting a salad is more expensive or buying the stuff for salad is more expensive than buying um cheaper more processed foods and that isn't going to be the same across the board all across the world but generally i think that's true otherwise we otherwise i don't feel we'd be having as much of a problem here with 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 that kind of scenario and I think you're right. It's where we are back to where we're saying the Goldilocks thing. It's a comfort zone, isn't it? It's easy. It's easy to make the food that's not so good for you. And it tastes better and you don't have to push yourself to not have, not have the bad things in it. It's easier to make. Again, it's all, it's all comfort zoning and it's easy. And then like you said, Joe, then you sit down in front of your Netflix, you instantly stream a series that you'd have had, you know, even, 20 years ago when we were still living in a life of luxury, it would be drip fed out to you. Now it's just there on demand and you can watch a whole series on one night while you're eating your food 
that's taking 10 minutes. You don't really need to push yourself for anything. And it is, it is a trap to fall into. And I think, and I say, and I think that is the trap we're falling into. I think I fell into that trap, but I knowingly fell into the trap until something woke me up. Like this, like talking about it and actually going, what are the messages we're sending through? And I think you said, you know, as we, you know, I've got, I've got two young daughters and, you know, and, and again, I, you know, I, I suppose going back, I think I was more aware of it, you know, because I think it's, it's a really important thing to, to recognise um, that we do need to make more effort. We do need to be conscious of where everyone has been tied into. Um, like you say, like the TV programmes, right, it's to wait next week and it'll be coming on, you have to wait for another week. What are you talking about? No, you can have it straight away. Um, but it's because it's demand, it's supply and demand, economics, um, all that sort of stuff. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're if you Amazon, you say, no, you're going to wait 28 days. Well, I want to go to the place that gives me the next day, right? That's, that's what people want. And I think, do we need to look at that as a site and go, actually, do we need to deny again, like the guys doing their sugar sugar challenge, right? And um, apparently, let's go, Lee has been putting on the comments there. Let's yeah, go, yeah, Lee. I, I ignored that one. <laughs> Overlooked that. I would just say, though, coming up, just for on the Instagram, Andrew's just made a reference there to micro bacon. By complete coincidence, someone mentioned this to me earlier today when I was in a meeting, and it blew my mind, the concept of micro bacon. I'd never heard of it before. It's twice in one day. So I think it's against what you're saying, Joe. It's telling me to eat it. Look at that. That's the thing, though. So it is that in the back of the mind, it's subconscious. We want to eat it. It's a, it, it, it talks to our, you know, our our survival brain, probably the amygdala, you know, that survival part of our brain that we want to eat. Um, and again, I put Angela's on a period of discipline. You know, it's about disciplining, isn't it? I mean, I'm really trying hard not to sort of sit down when I sit down, eat those like crisps or whatever. Um, and I'm really trying to be good, trying to eat three pieces of fruit and all that sort of stuff. But it's really hard because I think there's there's conditioning drawing down on me, you know. Um, and I think that's something that um, I think we've all got to be conscious of. I think. We've got, to, we've got to get a balance on what's right for us personally. I think we've got to look at it. Um, and I think, for me, the Goldilocks story, that's what all kicked off me. That was that revelation about, God, this story is about comfort all the time. We're trying to tell our kids about comfort, but actually, life's not like that. If you want things, you've got to work for them. You, can, you know, if you get a, a trophy for seventh place, you know, what, what are we saying? What's the message you're saying, you know? You get, you get, get a trophy for turning up, you know? You know, and, and it never used to be like that in my day. It was like, you only got a trophy, you come first, second or third. There was no, none of that. Now, I've never experienced that. I don't think when I went to marketing school, they did that. But anyway, I know we're running down on time. I think we've got about five minutes left, guys. Um, but I don't know. I'll throw it back to you guys. I probably went on a bit of a rant. No, it's good. I think we've covered a lot of ground in this one here. It's really good. And I think the overall message, Joe, I don't want you to sum it up in a second. Um, besides the fantastic conversation we're having on Instagram about micro bacon, <laughs> it is to push yourself, don't fall in the trap of that comfort zone. And I think there's a wider thing, Joe, like you said, be aware of the example you're setting for others. If you're working hard, if you're pushing yourself, if you're showing the rewards you can get long term from that, hopefully that will inspire and influence those around you as well. Would be my thought, my thought on this. Ryan, in the serious question, not the jokey one at the end, have you got any final thoughts? No. Oh, we've got to do that again at the end now. And Joe, no, we don't. take us home. <laughs> yeah, so just really to sort of end it, you know, just be aware culturally, don't forget this, sort of those subconscious messages, you know. Look at your goals. I mean, have goals and, and you know, recognise that it's going to be difficult. Recognise that you, you, you're going to be wanting to, to run away from the pain and go towards pleasure, like the marshmallow experiment I referenced earlier, you know. Children at a young age, even at that age, you know, struggle with that. So... I would say if you're aiming for anything, it's always going to be difficult. It's just having a plan to deal with that thing, having a plan that you're going to, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. And your brain's going to try and get you to go easy where you maybe need to take the other step. So like I said on, on the chat here, there's discipline we need to look at, you know, we need to look at our cultures and see, you know, what is, you know, what is the thing we're trying to achieve and recognize we've got to be patient. We've got to be disciplined. We've got to have all these things to make sure that we are moving slowly towards. I'm not going to say getting it overnight. You're not going to do this. It's going to take, years it's going to take time it's going to take effort it's going to take dedication to get the results that you want and like everyone like gary v says he says everyone wants a six-pack but no one wants to put in the work and that's why i'm gonna leave it it's good i love it some really good inspiring messages it's a great conversation joe like last week with the wood story i wonder where you're going with goldilocks but it's been brilliant we thank everyone out there listening and watching those joining us on instagram as well thank you very much we genuinely appreciate you all um whatever service you're listening on now if it's podcast if you're watching on youtube hit the subscribe button 
um, leave us a review, leave some comments. It all helps get the message out there. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to follow us on social media as well. We on the show here, we are at listen to I N listen T O I N across Twitter and Instagram. Joe, again, just put in Jose Noya, J O S E Noya, um, inspiration nation on any social media service and you will find joe and his fantastic content daily videos loads of great inspiration and of course don't forget to head over to inspirationnation.org.uk uh, you can check out the inspiration nation coaching service and if we've got time to squeeze it in get some fast fantastic inspiration nation merch like the mugs we're putting up on the screen right now come on ryan join in join in come on, ryan. there we go yeah, love, um, for that, man. love for that so that's, thank thanks, that's what we love um again thank you everyone for listening we'll be back in again next week all that's left for me to do is ryan's already chucked in his nose the counters down three two one inspiration, inspiration. Nation. catch you guys later. later i'm off to microwave some bacon <laughs>